is ReactCast episode 5, Context, part 2. On the last episode, I talked about how Context is a cool feature, but also how it has two little problems. The first one is the fact that the API is experimental, so it will end up changing a lot. The second problem are the updates that don't propagate if any component in the middle of the hierarchy implements should component update. So, let's get to solving those pesky little problems, shall we? First things first, the Context API is experimental, yeah, but also the Context API is already being used by important libraries like React Router and React Redux, so even if we do label it as experimental, I think it's reasonable to assume that it's not going away anytime soon. But yeah, it may change. So how do we prepare our code base for a possible change? By making the area subject to change minimal and easily spotted. How? Well, this means that instead of having many individual components read from context directly, we should wrap context reads in a higher order component and reuse this behavior. In our sample project here, I will create a with locale higher order component. That way, it can be used by any component that needs to access the locale, and none of them will access context directly, but reuse the behavior from the higher order component. Let me create it now. I'll call it with locale higher order component.js. So let me scaffold a higher order component quickly here. Just remember, a higher order component is a function that receives a component as parameter. Then it returns a component, and finally it renders the original wrapped component back, explicitly passing the props along since we're now receiving them. If you don't know how to use higher order components, or if you want to learn a little bit more, just stop now and go check out episode 1 of ReactCasts. Now, using the content panel as reference, I'll copy the context types declaration to our higher order component, and I'll also copy the locale constant declaration to my higher order component and inject it as a prop on the wrapped component. How do I use with locale higher order component? Well, back on the content panel, let me import it and augment the exported content panel. Now, the only difference in the content panel is that instead of using the context API directly, it is now receiving the locale as a prop. So I only need to change this to prop types and this for props, that's all. Let's test it on the browser. Again, nothing changed, but now all the context implementation is encapsulated and my content panel doesn't know anything about it. Let's do it again. So let's use it in any other component, anyone, I don't know. Uh, let's choose panel.js. I'll import with locale higher the component. I'll augment it when exporting it. As I know you remember, you can also use this as a decorator. And I'll add this.props.locale.footer here. Let's test it again. There it is. If the context API changes, we only need to update with locale higher the component. Okay, cool. That's it for problem number one. Now problem number two, updates that don't propagate. As you know, React provides the should component update lifecycle method, and it can be used inside components to short circuit the re-rendering process for performance improvements. I promise to talk about performance fine tuning and should component update on a future episode, so I'm not getting into any specifics right now but I am linking to the documentation on the show notes. If you want to know more, just go there and click it. Uh, what matters now is that by implementing should component update returning false, this component and really all of its children, they never render more than once. That's what I'm doing. I'm editing internal panel and adding should component update returning false. Let's see what happens. The first render was fine, as you can see, but look what happens when I try to change the locale. Because the internal component returns false to should component update, all components below it on the component tree also won't get updated. See the content panel here? At the same time, all components above it on the component tree continue to update normally. That's why you see the panel contents changing when I select a different locale. Now, 
the fact that should component update is returning false means that components down the tree won't be notified that the context has been updated. But that's not all. Even if we could somehow notify the components that the context has changed, they still would only have access to the old context object. To solve this problem, we need to keep context shallow immutable. That means that we can't change value in the surface level like we're doing here. On every state change, we're generating a new object. To solve this problem, we can never change the objects that are passed as context, but we can change their internal data. So actually, I'm creating a new locale class here. I'll just scaffold a basic class here, but bear with me. Back on the app, I'm importing the locale class I just created and using a constructor to instantiate it. See, I'm keeping the locale instance around. I'll, I'll never use another instance. I'm also updating the getChildContext method to pass around my new object. The locale instance itself is always the same. Our context is shallow immutable. Now, internally, our locale class will have a property pointing to a locale file, and this property will change. It is still a constant instance outside. So let me move these imports to my locale class. Now I'm creating a constructor that accepts the initial language and sets it as a property. I will call, let me see, strings. I'm also creating a method here called setLanguage, and in it I'm changing the strings. On app, I already have a local state mechanism to keep track of the current locale. So I'm simply adding a component will update lifecycle method to call set language on the locale instance with the new current locale whenever the state changes. I'm also taking the opportunity to update the panels that use locale to add the new strings property here and here. Let's test. Oops, there's an error. Oh, I forgot to update the locales path. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Uh, let's check on the browser. No, we're not there yet. But we already did the first step, without which things wouldn't work. Now, every component in the tree can potentially access the updated values. They just need to be alerted that the values have changed, without relying on regular update chain. So let's build a subscribe mechanism. Back on my locale class, I'm creating a subscription array here, starring empty, and I'm also creating a subscribe method. The subscribe method will receive a callback and simply add this callback to the array of subscriptions. Now, whenever set language is called, I'll invoke every single callback registered here. How do we use the subscription mechanism? Let's go to our with locale hired component and subscribe automatically to our locale object when it mounts. Component did mount. This dot context dot locale dot subscribe. And what will be the callback? Well, we know this is called whenever the string values are updated, so I'm simply forcing the component to update. This dot force update. Let's test it again. Perfect, it works. Credits for this idea to use a subscription mechanism go to Michelle Westrate, creator of MobX. Michelle, I hope I'm saying your name right. My friend, I'm sorry if I'm not. And uh, Michelle wrote this article called How to Safely Use React Context, and I linked to it below. Go check it out. You just watched an episode of React Casts. As usual, the source code for this episode is available on GitHub. You can also use GitHub to request screencasts. Check it out at github.com slash castiozen slash reactcasts. If you like this episode, subscribe so you can be notified of the next one. Also, big thanks to our sponsor, Netlify, a hosting platform that automates CDN delivery, continuous deployment, HTTPS, and much, much more. And they have free plans. Check them out at netlify.com. Thanks for watching.